What's up everybody? Brandon with Pro Adventures. We're going on another trip and I have to reinstall the loft bed that I made a couple years ago. It's one of my most requ um, requests that I get from people uh, is how I made it and what the dimensions are. This is not going to be a build video, uh, more of a reassembly, but I will include how I did it, the measurements, the product I used, and whatnot. Um, it's not your standard loft bed uh, that I would say. I don't know of too many loft beds out there, but um, my kids are, well, they were seven and 10 when I did this. Now they're a little older, a little taller. It's gonna be a little bit of more of a squeeze than it was uh, a couple years ago. Probably the last time we're gonna get to use it as a actual loft, but parts are reusable on anything else. So, um, but yeah, this is it. Uh, what we have is a 2015 Sienna, uh, nothing fancy, base model. The only thing we got is the sliding doors because kids, so wasn't a van guy either, by the way. Um, anytime we go on our road trips, we take out the third row, it's just the four of us, and I end up using this bottom area as a pantry. Uh, you can see our uh, episode two um, from our Yellowstone trip. That shows us um, kind of how we all had it all set up and everything, but... Yeah, let's get after it. We gotta remove all these plastic panels and uh, they just don't do anything but make it look beautiful. Um, cover up all the mechanism, but gotta remove that first before we can get to the bolts. I don't know the proper way to remove these, so I just yank. The yank method always works. thing I like to do so I don't lose my bolt or my nuts. I've already lost a few nuts, but let's put them right back in where they go. That way you don't lose them or get confused where they go. It's so big. All right. I had to vacuum it all up. Kid had all their stuff in there, so definitely needed to be cleaned. Okay, some of it's mine, but you got kids. That's what you're there for. Blame it on them. The material I use for the frame it's called Unistrut. Now there are several different kinds of Unistrut. This is what I would call shallow Unistrut. Uh, it's seven eighths inches tall um, and all Unistrut has the same width. Um, they come in 10 foot sticks. You can get them in green. This is just painted so a little more corrosion resistant, I guess. Uh, you can get them in galvanized, stainless, um, thicker, um, even super thick. But for what we're doing, I'm using shallow and the piece that I have here is for the back of the, the back of the loft. Um, I do have this cross piece on here because this is where the lid for the pantry that goes across this, this is where this sets on. So um, that's why this is here. Any of the hardware I'm using, always use 3.8. 3.8 uh, is super strong, you're never going to break it. And a couple of the tricks that I use, I use Unistrut strut nuts, not just bolts. Um, I bolt, I use bolts, but they go into the strut nuts. A lot of people use Unistruts, but don't use the, um, all the fun hardware that goes with Unistrut. It's a little pricier, but it works. I'll show you what I mean. So this is just an L bracket. It has two holes on the top, two holes on the bottom. You can get them in single hole on top and bottom, um, L's, 90s, everything under the sun. And what I mean by strut nut, is that, or strut channel. See how that has that groove in there? This nut actually slides right in and the plastic keeps it in place. So here's a backside view and you can see it goes all the way through the hole. So you can run a bolt through there if you want. I get bolts that are just long enough to go through the backside of the nut. So you see this one here is all tightened up and the threads are just through the back of the nut. So this thing will hold so much weight, like ridiculous amounts of weight. Uh, so this is just a little H um, sort of pattern 
that I have created. Um, so this is metal. And if you want to cut it, you can use a hacksaw. I personally use a uh, Milwaukee bandsaw. But, um, yeah, you could use a hacksaw. You'd be here a while, though. So just forewarning you. But for 7 8 inch um, thick material, you're not going to get anything stronger than that. And lightweight and cost effective. So you can do this all in wood. Absolutely. It's probably a little easier and a little faster. But nothing's going to be as strong as metal Unistrut. So uh, I'll just show you how this goes. So the way I have this measured out, the height on this, so basically from down here to up here, that's the overall height generally of the loft minus this. So I believe this is set already at the height that I had it, just so you're kind of gauging what I have for room. Everyone asks, how much room do you have underneath there? Well, I have 24 and a half inches. That's what the missus and I sleep under, 24 and a half inches. But this vertical piece right here, for me is 34 inches. So if this one's 34 and this one's 34, that's gonna get my height, because that sits down into the recess where the chairs were. Now my cross piece is approximately 49 inches, um, so that's where the lid will rest, and we'll get to that in a minute. So now I'm going to load this back piece in first, because it can kind of support itself to an extent when against stuff. But one thing I want to do before I do that, uh, this is a technically an 8-passenger, because it's the LE, so it doesn't have all-wheel drive. So I have a jump seat right here. I'm going to get that out of there, because we're going to use that for precious storage. More room, less weight. All right, jump seat gone. Time to put in our rear support. All it does is sit down on the back of the floor and the bottom. So all said and done, it's end up gonna sit just like that. Now this is the front part. So what it is, is same, same Unistrut. Just cut section. This is the L that supports it. I have the same one inch screws by three eighths with a washer. Those are gonna come up from the bottom into those strut nuts that I have on my platform, which I'll show you in a minute. But these guys, these guys are the ones that are up front behind the captain's chairs. So whatever this measures, this is the real deal. This is exactly what I get. All said and done. Twenty-six inches. So the missus and I have twenty-six inches that we sleep under with the kids sleeping above us. We're not gonna answer the questions that you have coming up in your brains right now. We're gonna ignore those. Anyway, these sit up here. Right there and right there, but I can't do it by myself, so got to recruit the help. This is the platform itself. This is what the kids actually sleep on. So it's the same Unistrut, but I used couplers with the same nuts and just built a flat frame. Um, these are the nuts. You see they can slide back and forth. And that's what those L brackets will bolt into. I added this piece in here because I put a carabiner on it and that's how we keep the lid up for the the pantry hatch. So this is really only added just for that. It was a lot of work just to add for that. But this platform widthwise, the sleeping width is 49 inches again, 49 inches wide. And It is 51 and a half inches long. And I just recessed in the Unistrut um, an inch all the way around the perimeter just to just to keep it in a little bit. I didn't want any sharp edges from the Unistrut pieces being able to hit any skin or anything. So, But this is all pre-bolted. Um, so as you can see, it's 
this main frame, the two front legs, and the single back leg. So four pieces total. And if I have help, I can do the whole thing in about uh, 15, 20 minutes from taking the seats out to putting this loft completely in. So I got my lovely assistants back there and they're gonna help me set it because it's almost impossible to do with one person with the way I built it. The top is half inch MDF. Super straight, but does not do good with water. I recommend not using MDF like I did. I had it, so that's why I used it. But if you get any water on this, balloons into a sponge. No good. It's actually heavier than I remember. It doesn't help that it sucks. One of you want to go first? No, I put it in backwards. Hey guys, it's very And now we're, we're getting creative. We put the front legs on first, and that works a lot better. It's only my second time. Now this guy gets to go in next, the rear one, which is just a little bit tricky with the wife laying in the trunk. But So now we're just tightening, <laughs> tightening up these right here. How we go? One second. Okay. Ah! My legs just saved the day. You think I did squats this morning, huh? Get swole. <laughs> Here is the finished product. These are the legs that we installed with these two bolts going up. Same on that side as well. So now you can see we have our platform in there. Climb the seats, get those to where they need to be. Put the headrest down. So the way I designed it is it goes right up to the edge of where the glass hits, but does not block the cigarette lighter because that's what I use to power my cooler. But now this bar makes sense. It's level with right across here. So since we sleep in this area right across here, let me get that board and put that in for our pantry. So this is it. It's got a handle on it. I don't know, I got it from a TV, but then it's got all the little notches on it that I need to to get it in here. So we'll go at an angle here, get it in, and just like that. Now we lay our one inch um, foam, they're yoga mats, um, they're six foot long or whatever, so those will lay down over all this and then that'll give us a, a decent base and then blankets and everything else. But now we have a pantry. And all our food and everything go down there. This little niche between the Unistrut and the back. Um, sometimes we put camera gear there, or whatever. But now we have the niche where the jump seat was that we can store stuff. I would like to custom mold a 
water bottle for in there. That would be awesome. But, yeah. All right, time for some measurements. I'm gonna go our height between the storage and the bottom of the unit strut. And that is 24 inches. Uh, it actually drops down so it's about 25 or so over there. But that allows us uh, enough room to do what we need to do. Um, sleep. Um, I slightly skew the front supports out. That gives me a little more stability. Mainly, it makes it a little easier to crawl in and out. Um, so 24 inches for two adults to sneak through there. If you want to get real picky, it's actually 22 with the big eye bolt that I have sitting on here. In between the two vertical supports, here I have 44 and a quarter. Um, and then the overall length of the platform, once you're looking up top here, like I said, it's 51 and a half by 49 inches wide. So that gives us plenty of room for what we need to. And we just make it work. That's just the S hook that holds that lid up while we're digging in the pantry. On the garbage. Uh oh, I hope it falls in. <laughs> so we're laying down fully and we have enough room. It's not a lot of room, but when it's 14 degrees out or whatever it's going to get down to, that's what it was in the Tetons when we did this the first Gotta time. Gotta snuggle. Yeah, so, we'll snuggle it up. A lot of snuggling. Stay warm. But kids are comfy. We're comfy. I'm not comfy. Well, we will be. We will be comfy. <laughs> this is just. This is not comfortable. We're gonna have a yoga mat and a nice thick yoga mat and bedding and lots of blankets, so it'll be comfortable. What psych and sleep a family of four? For a little while anyway. Okay, I'll just give you guys a quick tour of our van. Basically down here we have our Jack Jack Jackery that charges all of our devices and everything and our camera equipment and stuff. There's the garbage. Um but then this is the snack covered just like right here it has our snacks in it that we like to snack on while we're on the road and then up here is kind of like an everything tray we have lots of charging devices and phones and masks and airpods and stuff and then down there is where my parents cammy and brandon sleep it's kind of full filled with a lot of blankets and pillows and that's where ian and i sleep up there it's pretty comfortable it's a little messy but it's real yeah not let's, for the gram, it's real life. Yeah, let's go to the back. This is our pantry, and we keep a lot of our cooking supplies and snacks back here. And a lot of our other food that we use to cook and eat is in the cooler. We have a little snack cooler for when we're going out on a day. We just keep our snacks in there, like for the day snacks, and in the cooler. Then we have all of our meals. Basically, how you close it. There's this little attachment thingy, and you take it off of that, and then put it down like that. And then that's where the parents sleep, and that's where the kids sleep. This is from our latest road trip to the Grand Canyon. We spent eight nights in the van with temperatures getting down to 24 degrees at night. Even at the lowest temps, the loft setup always allowed us to sleep inside, keeping it comfy cozy. If you want to see more of our no build build, check out our Yellowstone series. That was our original test run of the loft bed with 15 days out west. And as always, thanks for watching.